I couldn't help myself and had to visit my new favorite place last week. And although this time wasn't very spectacular, I did find an old hard drive in a mountain of other hard drives. A Connor CFS1275A, an IDE drive with 1.2GB of space and a few issues. I wonder if I will be able to get this drive recognized on any of my retro motherboards. The damage on this drive was probably caused by dumping it with many other drives on the ground. One issue is the IDE connector, which is completely smashed. The pins in the center are badly damaged and one pin was pushed backward. And as I have mentioned while fixing the Creative Labs blaster board, if you see some damage caused by physical force, check the surroundings because chances are there are more things that have been damaged. And boy was I right. While looking over the PCB, which looks so nice with all the chips and components, I found this IC with one side badly damaged. All pins on this side of the chip have been squeezed under the housing. Almost none of the pins connect to the pads anymore. But those are all the damages I could find. What do you think? Is this drive too far gone? Even if I would be able to fix the IDE connector and the IC, there is still no guarantee that this drive will work. A harsh impact or shock could have damaged the internals of the drive. Even if the drive is going to be recognized by the system, it may not be usable. My repair attempt may be unsuccessful, but at least I can use this drive to practice. There will be some 3DFX content coming soon and I wouldn't mind practicing on other ICs before I attempt to fix this Diamond Monster 3D. Before I start fixing the IDE port and the IC, a quick word from PCBWay, the sponsor of this video and the supporter of many of my projects. PCBWay is the perfect partner if you're looking to turn your ideas into reality. They offer a range of services including manufacturing of various printed circuit boards, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding and 3D printing. You can directly order any of my projects from the shared project space on PCBWay.com and if you sign up as a new customer you will get a 5 US dollar welcome bonus. Links to PCBWay.com are in the video description. <laughs> what a mess. Let's try to bend those pins back in place. Luckily those pins are quite strong, which would allow me to bend them into their original position without the risk of breaking them off. I don't have so much hope with the legs of the IC. In total there are about 10 pins that are badly damaged. But with caution and plenty of patience, I return pin by pin back to the original place. This damage must have been caused by the corner of another hard drive smashing into this connector. Unfortunately due to the harsh impact, parts of the plastic frame have broken off but this is just a cosmetic issue. All that is left is this single pin that was pushed backward. With the help of small pliers, the pin can be pushed forward easily. And after a few minutes, the connector looks pretty good. A test to plug in an IDE cable passed with flying colors. Now we just need to fix that IC with the bent legs. This one looks like a total disaster. Some of those pins are bent so badly that I believe they will break off the moment I touch them. Well, we will see. First we have to get this chip off the PCB. Since I want to use hot air for this, I have to unscrew the board from the drive. There are just 4 screws that hold the board in place and a connector that connects the board to the drive itself. With the PCB removed and captain tape covering the surrounding area, we can start to apply some flux and low melt solder. I decided to use low melt solder so I don't have to use high temperatures for an extended time. I don't know if this really helped, but the chip came off pretty easily. Before I focus on the chip, let me clean up the pads. It is easier when the board is a bit warmer due to the hot air I used while removing the chip. There was also a cut trace that I noticed while I inspected the area around the chip. This trace required a jumper wire and some fresh solder mask. By now this is one of the easier things for me to fix. Once the wire's in place, I use a UV light to harden the fresh solder mask. Now let's have a look at this chip. Three sides look pretty good, but the fourth side is a mess. <sighs> this will be a pain to fix. With extreme caution, I started to bend back pin by pin. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just want the pin to face in the right direction. Later, when the chip is on the board, I can align the pins to match up with the pads. Unfortunately, some of the pins are soldered together because of the low melt solder I applied but I could imagine that this would have happened anyway to a certain degree even if I hadn't used low melt solder. 
By the way, I ordered a new microscope camera because I feel that the quality of my recordings aren't as good as they could be. At the moment I'm using the camera that came with the microscope, which costs just a bit over 300 US dollars in total. Hopefully the new camera will be here by the time I start working on the 3DFX card. And if you enjoy the things I am doing here and you want to support my channel, then you can do so by becoming a Patreon. Your contributions will help me cover some of the costs of new equipment. Ok, after about 10 minutes I was done with this work as well. Surprisingly, it wasn't as difficult as I thought. Unfortunately, two pins broke off or were already gone. We will have to install a wire to replace those pins. I did replace pins like this on a voodoo card once. But today will be different. I have to drill a little into the chip to uncover more of the remaining copper connections in the plastic housing. Otherwise, there just isn't enough material left to attach a wire to. I'm using an engraving pen to remove parts of the housing. Since I do not want to unnecessarily damage the surface on the top, I drill into the side of the chip, uncovering just enough to attach a wire. And now we can go ahead and solder a short 0.2mm wire to those two places. I really wonder if this hard drive is going to show up when attached to a PC. I think that would already be a huge success. But as I said before, unfortunately fixing this IC doesn't guarantee a working hard drive. There is still the possibility for the drive not to function properly. Ok, we are done. The IDE connector and the IC have been repaired. We can finally test this drive on a real PC. But somehow I have little hope for this drive. But you never know. So, the system is trying to auto detect the drive. And. No. Did I just see a Connor drive was detected? Oh, yes, it looks like we do have a 1278 MB drive attached to the board. That's really amazing. But before we all get excited, let me tell you that this drive does not work. In order to make this video not too long, here is the summary of what I have tried and how this drive drove me crazy. I probably spent way more time on this drive than I should have. You see, each time I tried to format the drive, create or delete a partition, it failed. But during the next try, the drive just went a little bit further in the process. A BIOS format utility could not start a format because it got stuck accessing cylinder 0 with head number 0. And over time, it reached head number 4. But it couldn't pass head number 4 eventually. FDisk didn't recognize the drive initially, but then it happily reported an MS-DOS partition. I even could go ahead and delete partitions. Unfortunately, creating new partitions failed. At some point, the percentage display jumped around from 0 to 17, to 26, to 0, back to 30, and so on. But it never completed. PowerQuest Partition Magic also saw the drive. It could see the drive's current partitions, but whenever I tried to alter the layout, the program failed to try to apply the changes. But the best results I could achieve with Easy Drive, which drove me also crazy. Initially, I couldn't do anything, until the program, out of nowhere, could create a backup of the boot track. I could even restore my backups and I could hear the drive actually accessing the disk platters. And when I tried to install Easy Drive using the automated setup procedure, the drive threw me carrot after carrot. First, it failed to create partitions. Then, it looked like partitions could be created, but copying any data to the drive failed. About an hour later, the drive started to copy files, but failed shortly after. And this continued for another couple of times. Each time, the progress bar moved a bit further than the time before. However, at this stage, I could no longer see any improvements. The drive always failed at the same position. As if it got stuck at the certain sector and froze once it tried to access it. Unfortunately, I was not able to revive this drive, but I'm still happy that it showed up in the BIOS. Would you have imagined that this drive would show up during post when you saw the damaged IDE connector and all those bent legs on the IC at the beginning of this video? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you want me to try something with this drive. I don't think software can do anything to improve it. Shall we put it in the freezer and see if it changes its behavior? Or do you have any other suggestions? Then please let me know in the comments. And of course, here are a few sound samples of the Connor drive. Those are mainly from booting up and restoring the boot tracks.
And this is all I have for you today. Please like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And a big thank you to all my Patreon members. Your invaluable support helps me create more and better content. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.